What up peeps? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a review on EF Ultimate Break, formerly known as EF College Break. Number one question I get asked all the time on Instagram is, is it a scam? No, it's not a scam. This is a legit travel company. This video is not sponsored. However, I wish it was. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to give just a quick little video, tell you the goods, the bads, and um, the little drama I had with EF Ultimate Break on my last trip I took with the company. So let's hop right into it. EF Ultimate Break, they like recently changed their name maybe like a year or so ago to EF Ultimate Break. EF Ultimate Break is for young travelers between the ages of 18 and 29 to go on trips all over the world. I've taken two trips with them in 2018. I spent New Year's Eve with them going from 2017 to 2018 in Thailand. And that was like my first time out the country. And it was seriously the time of my life. And then I went with them to Greece in September 2018. And that trip was not as great. Kind of no fault of EF Ultimate Break, but kind of their fault. But we'll dwell into that issue later. Okay, Jay, you paid all this money. Oh my gosh, I can do this trip for cheaper. But let me tell you what's included with EF Ultimate Break. So if you see me looking down, I'm just looking at my laptop. That way I don't miss a thing that's included. So number one, you get flights for airport transfers. Now let me dwell a little bit more into this. When I flew to Thailand, I actually booked my own flight. I did not book my flight through EF Ultimate Break. That was not a good decision because if you book your own flight through EF Ultimate Break, you will have to find your own transportation initially only initially and at the end departure so if you're flying into let's say thailand i flew into bangkok i had to find my own way from the airport to the first hotel and on the way back from the hotel back home but any internal flights between cities or any type of internal transportation is covered i suggest you go ahead and save yourself the headache and just let them book your flights accommodations at least every accommodation that ef ultimate break sets you up with at least they have free breakfast. So it's better to go ahead and stuff your face in the morning, that fr free included breakfast, not included, it is included, that free included breakfast and go on about your day. If you're traveling with a group of friends, just let them know and they'll try their best to put you together. Also, if you're traveling with a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, just let them know and they'll go ahead and try to accommodate you as well. Um, if that's the case, I do believe, like if you just want a private room with just y'all two, I do believe they make you pay a little bit more, but <laughs> I'm single, so I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have those issues. <laughs> so you get a tour director. This tour director meets you at the airport and they are with you for the entire duration of your trip. Um, you also get city transfers. So we got Metro passes in Greece included with our money to go from place to place. You also get a private Facebook group like a month or two before your scheduled departure date. This is helpful because you might want to find a roommate if you don't, if you're traveling solo like I usually am. Or it's just fun to post like exciting things like, hey guys, we're 20 days away from our trip. Or And then the Facebook group is yours forever. But by then, you're usually all Instagram friends. So and who really gets on Facebook anymore? Uh, you also get tickets to local attractions. Those are usually included to like the big time things. For Thailand, um, most of the temples were included. I think all of the temples actually were included and some other fun things as well. Oh, and on the first night or sometimes the second night of your trip, you also get a free welcome mixer. So it's usually like a light dinner, appetizers, and it's always drinks included too. And it's just a nice way to go ahead and get to know the people that you're gonna be traveling with for the next few days. It's nice to have everybody kind of get loose and get to know each other. Yeah. Also, um, at the end of your trip, you also get a farewell of dinner. You can sit there and cry and be sad about your trip ending and leaving all your new friends. What do you spend money on that's not included? So when I went to Thailand, Thailand is a little bit cheaper than like a lot of countries. So we were there for 14 days and I forced myself to spend $600. Forced. I brought like more than that, but I forced myself to spend that money. And then in Greece, I probably brought about eight hundred dollars but i didn't end up spending all that so things that's not included any extra um on the actual website ef ultimate breaks website if you want to do any additional excursions they will let you know which additional excursions cost a little bit more money so if, let's say you want to do an extra boat cruise in greece that was like an extra like 60 to 80 dollars 
in Thailand, we went to a home hosted dinner at a local Thai family's house and that was like an extra $60. So those are completely and totally optional to you. Your lunch and your dinner, you're on your own for, but when you arrive to a new city, your tour director kind of walks you around the city. And of course, they're usually local to the area sometimes, so they can go ahead and, or they've been to that city a thousand times, so they can recommend any good and local places to eat. And usually you could say like, hey, I'm looking for something kind of cheap. There's lots of street food available a lot of times. Um, and of course, any extra like spending items that you do, you do any shopping, souvenir shopping, that is all on your own. That is up to you and any extra spending money that you do bring. Next question, what if you are traveling alone? Listen, I am the biggest advocate for solo travel because if you wait for your friends to go with you, I promise your ass you would never go anywhere. So sometimes you can't wait on your friends. You just gotta just book the trip and go by yourself. And that's exactly what I did for both the Thailand trip and for the Greece trip. And luckily, um, there's usually so many other people also traveling alone um, and booking solo trips with EF Ultimate Break. And I never felt like I was really like alone. I can have a long time if I wanted to, if I wanted to hang out with this group of particular people, I could. If I wanted to go out and party with this group of people, I could. If I knew this group was a little bit more quiet and I just want to have a quiet dinner, I could. And there's also people that bring big groups of friends, but sometimes like what I saw on my trips that those groups of friends feel like the need to hang out with each other. Whereas for me, I just kind of got to go off and do my own thing or hang with certain people. And because I was traveling solo on both of my trips, there's not a single person that I didn't interact with or, you know, have a personal conversation with or hung out with. So that part is uh, really cool about traveling solo. Do not be afraid these trips, there's just a whole bunch of young people just looking to have the time of their lives. So don't be scared at all to kind of branch out your comfort zone. Even if you're a bit more quiet and reserved, I guarantee you, you'll still have the time of your life. I promise you. Next question I got was, would you recommend this if this is my first time traveling out the country? So like I've been on little cruises and stuff, like my family and friends, but I've never been on a international flight outside of the country until I went to Thailand in 2017-18. Yes, I think this is one of the best ways to kind of get your feet wet into traveling internationally alone. Uh, I was scared. I was on the plane shaking, like shaking, like what am I doing? I'm on a plane across the country for my first time ever going to freaking Thailand. I am scared. And I landed and I was like, at this point, I just got to yellow it out. Like I have no choice just to suck it up. And that was the one of the best decisions I've ever made. And since then, I've been to like five or six other countries, not all necessarily alone, but that just kind of just ignited a new fire in me. So do it if you're alone, I totally recommend it. Next question I got is, do I get free time? You know what, yes and no. You do get free time because you're, you're not obligated to do anything on the trip necessarily. Only thing you're obligated to do is hop on the plane between the city transfers or hop on the bus and don't miss it. In Thailand, we were so busy for like a 12 days straight that I we did not get a lot of free time. We were up usually around 6 or 7 a.m. and we'll be back like 12 hours later. We got free time on the bus to like sleep, but as far as like, I just wanna lay out by the pool, not necessarily. I take that back. Depending on your trip is how much free time you get. Cause in Greece, we had a lot of free time, but also with Greece, let me, let me, let me get to Greece. I traveled to Greece. I did the Greek Island tour in September, 2018. And I hyped up EF Ultimate Break so much. And I was like, everybody should use this tour company. It's awesome. We got to Greece and we landed in Athens. The weather was gorgeous. Spent like two days there. You first we flew to Santorini. And like the first day or two there was really, really pretty. Um, like I said, we went at the end of September. And then like this freak rainstorm happened, which is called a Medicaid. So it's a Mediterranean version of a hurricane. And Temperature dropped from like beautiful 80s and sunny, not a cloud in the sky, to about uh, a cool 60 degrees. And not like, okay, 60 degrees, because remember, um, I live in Florida, so like that's freezing to me. It was like the 60 degrees that just rain and it was cloudy and it sucked. We got stuck in Santorini for like four days. And so then EF Ultimate Break was like, oh, we're closely monitoring the storm. Meanwhile, like, 
you step outside there's like wind and there's like rain pellets hitting you and it feels like bullets because they're hitting you so freaking hard so we're just all kind of sitting in our hotel rooms because me i flew from florida when i flew from florida it was like 90 degrees i didn't bring a coat i didn't come from a cold climate so i wasn't really prepared for this freak rainstorm so i didn't have any really warm clothes so i really had to stay in the hotel room um, and then they put us on a ferry to Mykonos because we missed the island of Paros or Paros, P-A-R-O-S or however you say it. We missed that island, we got to Mykonos. We were there for two freaking hours before our tour director comes running down the beach and he's like, yo, y'all need to get off this island right now. We need to take the ferry. Meanwhile, we have been drinking for like two hours at this point. And as soon as we get off, the ferry and got checked into our little raggedy hotel they put us at paradise beach check it out also if you haven't seen my greek island vlog just check it out i'll leave that below but uh he comes running down the beach and he lets us know that we need to get off this island so we're all very incredibly drunk getting on a ferry and windy weather and the ocean is going like this so people are throwing up i just had to sleep through it and we made it back to Athens. So really out of the, we we're supposed to go to Athens, Santorini, Paros, Mykonos, and then go back to um, Athens. We missed basically those two islands. EF Ultimate Break, I feel like handled that terribly and how they uh, kind of assessed the storm and not letting us know that communication. Are we getting off the island safely? Are we going to Mykonos? Should we just fly back to Athens from Santorini? Why are we stuck in San, you know, as if like, I know that weather wasn't their fault, but the way that they handled it, I just felt like was really terrible. And there's with the last communication also did not give us any money back for that trip. You know, it's a Greek islands tour and we only saw one island. <laughs> we missed the other two. And um, we had, had like these beach tours, these beach cruises planned, not get any of that money back, but instead they offered us like $500 off our next trip. But that's not really helping you if you got to pay $3,500 to save $500. That, it just wasn't worth it. So would I travel with them again? Probably not. Which brings me to my next point of how much are the trips? Trips range between like, let's say a $2,000 for maybe going to like Costa Rica or something, all the way up to a around the world trip for like 60 days for like $1,100. So you just gotta go to the website, you type in where you wanna go, you type in your flags, you type in the scourges you wanna do, type in where you're leaving from, kind of price it out. You're able to price it out and just see. Um, Thailand, I think I paid about maybe $4,500. Or maybe it was like $3,500 without my flight. Cause my flight was like $1,300. That's so high to go to Thailand, I know, but I flew out on Christmas day. And then my trip to Greece was maybe $3,000 too. Uh, or 3500 somewhere around there. Yes, it's a little bit expensive, but it's totally worth it for what you get. Like I said, you get that long laundry list of items you get. Plus it's just a peace of mind. I mean, you're traveling by yourself. You don't want to worry about your hotels, how you're getting from city to city, your accommodations, where I'm going to eat, what I'm going to do, and trying to get to this attraction. You just want to, for me, it's just easier to just to pay the money and not worry about it and let somebody else plan it. And I'm like, okay, you need me at the airport at this time? Cool. I know the bus is going to be outside at four o'clock in the morning. I'll hop on the bus and we go to the next city. We go here. It's just easier for me not to worry about it. And that gives me a peace of mind. Next question I received was, is travel insurance worth it? Yes. Yes, the travel insurance is worth it. The travel insurance through EF Ultimate Break is around $150. That covers you in case your cell phone gets stolen, if your passport gets stolen, if you get sick on your trip, you need to fly back home. It covers so many things and I am all for having peace of mind. That's just like having life insurance. That's just like having car insurance. You don't know what's gonna happen and you definitely want to have that trip insurance. Now on one of my trips, one of the girls got pickpocketed, her phone, passport, money, all that all together was the night before we were scheduled to leave. Let's say you were in that situation and all your items got stolen, but you had trip insurance, they would have paid for your cell phone, your passport, and like because you're stuck in a different country for like an extra day or two while you're trying to go through US Embassy to get all those items handled, they would have paid for the hotel stay as well. But if you don't pay just a small measly fee of $150, you could be coming out of pocket thousands of dollars and you just don't want to worry about that when you're in another country. Get the travel insurance.
always. How much money to bring? I kind of covered this already, but it just kind of depends on what you think. If you're a super bougie traveler and you want to be eating steak and lobster every night, you might want to bring a little bit more money. If you're just like, you know what? Street food and not having sleep for dinner is just good enough for me. They recommend 80 to $100 a day, but it's a good starting point. Like I said, for Thailand, I brought $1,100 just in case. End up for seeing myself to spend $600. And this is like me getting massages and eating fancy dinners and going on boat cruises that we rented out a boat and trying to spend $600. Now in Greece, I don't know how much I would have spent had we hit all the islands, but I probably spent $300 maybe for the 11 days in Greece. Could have been more had we hit everything, but like I said, we didn't. So it just kind of depends. I would definitely stick to that recommended budget of $80 to $100 a day. That's the safe point. And plus anything you bring back home, just bring it back home. Another common misconception is that you need to be a college student to go on EF Ultimate Break trips, and you don't. You don't need a college degree, nothing special. Um, that might be why they changed their name from EF College Break to EF Ultimate Break, but I really don't know. But EF Ultimate Break, they seriously make it way too easy. All you do is go onto the website, you book your trip, you pay in payment plans over time, and then you hop on the plane and then you go. That's it. Also, the payments are interest free, which is really, really nice. So you could pay as little or as, not as little, but as little as much as you like. Of course, making any type of minimum payments. And then finally, one of the questions I get asked a lot from fellow black travelers is how is it traveling as a black person to these countries? Now, I can only speak in regards to EF Ultimate Break on the two trips I've taken with them. Thailand, I was the only black person on my trip. Was it weird with my group? Absolutely not. Was it weird traveling through Asia as a black person? Yes, <laughs> extremely. I had like these box braids in my hair and why Thai people won't touch your head because that's considered really holy uh, party view. The lots of Chinese tourists that are over there, they do. They're also not used to seeing black people. So I had a lot of people sneaking my pictures as um, far as the Chinese tourists. And I had a lot of um, people coming up just to, like touch my skin. And I'm like, okay. And the Chinese tourists also like my braids. There's a few Chinese girls over there with box braids like myself, but they'll just stick your hands, like their hands right in your head. And I had a layover there and back in China. And um, I'm not sure if China's a place I would want to visit. <laughs> I'm not sure, but the Thai people um, traveling there as a black person was interesting as well because every single skin product had a skin whitening in it. There's colorism all over the world and it's alive and well and it's very evident in places like Thailand. Um, there's a huge Indian population there and a huge Muslim population in Thailand too, which was I found fascinating and interesting. And um, the Indian people are a little bit of a darker skin tone and they are, um, there's a lot of Indian vendors in Thailand and a lot of people, Indian people yelling at me on the streets, hey chocolate, hey chocolate. And this one man, it was so sweet, he came right up to me and he held his, skin against, he held his arm against mine and said, we're the same color. Thai people are like trying to not get darker. They just, I don't know. I have very, I lost the thoughts about that. But um, yeah, I never felt discriminated against in Thailand at all. Uh, not based upon my skin color, no. But uh, it is interesting that almost every single skin product has whitening agents in it. What are accommodations like? The accommodations, I'm going to lie to you, they're nothing that I would stay in on my own accord if I had booked the trip myself and wasn't letting a group of strangers um, at EF Ultimate Break book it for me. I am slightly like a bougie traveler. I don't need to be like in the Four Seasons, but like I want to be able to get in the shower and not have to like wear my sandal shoes inside the shower because I want to know that it was clean and like bleached out before I got there. You could be sharing bathrooms with upwards to six people. So you definitely want to bring shower shoes for sure. Um, this is These hotels are going to be nothing fancy. If you even get a hotel, you might get a hostel. You might be sharing up to six girls. They're not always guaranteed to have air conditioning. Um, the hotel, they try to put us put us in in Mykonos for Greece was absolutely disgusting. I was going to sleep on top of the sheets, but unfortunately we're only there for two hours. So we never got the chance to stay. And then even some of our Thailand hotels, I would never walk around that place barefoot ever. I was wearing shoes every chance I got, try not to touch too many things. I did not even put my suitcase on the ground. 
my friends are probably gonna watch this like Ugh, you're so bougie jay they're damn right damn right but i feel like if i'm paying four thousand dollars four five hundred dollars to go somewhere i feel like i should have a decent place to stay so accommodations to me gets a definite four out of ten